Hi, this is Gabrielle Lichterman, founder of Hormonology and creator of the Hormone Horoscope. So today's video is part of a series of videos that talk a little bit more about me. Uh, as Hormonology has increased in popularity, more fans want to know about the person behind Hormonology um, and want to know how it started, what inspires me, and a little bit about me personally. So today's video is about what drives my passion for Hormonology. So to do that, we have to go all the way back to 1970, the year I was born, the 70s. They were just reminiscing with somebody um, just a few minutes ago about how much of a simpler time it was. It was a time of princess phones and eight-track tapes and Donnie and Marie. Um, but it was also a time where many parents were still very hesitant to talk about real facts that have to do with bodily functions, like your period. My mother was no exception. Um, I think my uh, period talk lasted less than a minute, <laughs> and um, it really left more questions and answers. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect, and um, I think my, my best friend's mother was probably the same way, because my best friend and I would spend countless hours uh, talking about Tom, uh, which meant time of the month. I mean, even between best friends, we couldn't say the word period. That's how, you know, traditional it was back then. Um, people just didn't talk openly. Um, when I got my period at the age of 13, it really didn't help <laughs> to clarify a lot of the questions I'd had. Um, you know, my mother was still very, you know, secretive. She really didn't like to talk about this stuff. In fact, um, if I wanted pads, I had to use code words. I had to ask her for extra cereal when she went to the grocery store. So when she announced, okay, she's going to the supermarket, if you said, I'd like some extra cereal, some more cornflakes, she would come back with pads because she couldn't even say the word pads. So I still had a lot of questions. Um, in the early 80s, it was still a very simple time. Um, we didn't have a lot of information. There was no internet. Um, it, was, it was still, you know, what you learned was from your friends, which was very little, and from teen magazines. So I went to a teen magazine and to look for questions, you know, to look for information about my period. And um, there was one bit of advice in a teen magazine that I remember very, very clearly. If you have questions about your period, ask your gym teacher at school. Now this led me to believe that gym teachers were somehow specially educated in menstruation, that they possessed some kind of knowledge that nobody else did. <laughs> Unfortunately, my gym teacher was a very imposing figure. She was a woman, but she was very, very tall and stout, and she wasn't warm, should I say. She was definitely a, you know, rough around the edges kind of gal. But I figured this teen magazine must be on to something. They advised me to ask her about my um, period question, so off I went to talk to her. I was very, very nervous. Um, <laughs> she, as I said, she was a very imposing figure and um, I, I worked up the courage and I finally, at the end of gym class, asked her this question I had about, happened to be tampons. <sighs> well, it was very clear, <laughs> very quickly, that she was the wrong person to ask. Uh, judging by her reaction, um, I might as well have asked, you know, the most efficient way to kill a kitten. She was really, really not interested in answering this question. This was, you know, disgusting to her. This was, you know, above her pay grade. This was not something she wanted to deal with. And I was mortified. I had followed the advice from this teen magazine, and now I was, you know, getting this terrible negative reaction as a result. And by the way, didn't get my question answered. So that was a real turning point for me. I remember feeling deeply humiliated and frustrated at the same time. And I thought, this is a, a basic human bodily function. Why can't anybody talk about this? I um, mean, I vowed at that point, at that young age, that I would always be able to talk about anything, um, and any function. And 
that really drove my passion for health writing. Um, I got into health journalism very quickly in my career. I found a, a deep passion for sharing uh, new research and expert tips about everything. Uh, I think it's just, it's handy to know. It's handy to know how to fix your body or notice symptoms in your body or know which are the appropriate experts to go to when you have questions about your body. For instance, why didn't this teen magazine advise me to go to my school nurse? Every school has one. <laughs> that would have been the appropriate person to talk to. So um, when I discovered hormonology in 1999 and developed it over the years, um, I knew that <laughs> despite hormones not being a real popular topic to talk about quite yet, um, it is now. We've really come a long way since then, but at the time it wasn't. Um, despite hormones still being a bit taboo, I knew I wanted to share this information. And it's this passion to get out um, correct information and get out useful information about your health, um, whether it's physical health or psychological health, uh, to as many people as possible that really drives me. And that's why I love what I do. I love being a health journalist and I love um, sending hormonology out into the world and teaching people how their hormones impact their moods, health, and behavior. So my latest mission is to help parents include a little bit of hormone information in their period talks. Um, I think period talks have come a long way since the 70s. There's a lot more information out there. There's a lot more information available for parents and caretakers as well as teachers to describe how um, menstruation occurs and what girls can expect. And girls can also seek it out for themselves because there's a lot more opportunities uh, like the internet and books uh, to find that information not just gym teachers, um, but I would like to help parents and caretakers as well as teachers include a little bit of basic information about hormones in their period talk today. And to do that, I have a couple of free eBooks. One is for parents and caretakers, another is for teachers of tween girls. Um, and these are free eBooks, so you just go to my website, myhormonology.com, and you'll find my free eBook library. Just select it, and you'll be sent the free eBooks. So I hope that if you give a period talk, you'll be able to download this, um, this, free, this free ebook and include this information so that um, in your period talk so that other tween and teen girls have all the information right at their very first cycle. And they don't have to you know, spend hours worrying and fretting and wondering what this mysterious um, this mysterious new cycle is going to be like. They have all the information right away. So again, myharmonology.com, download my free ebooks, and um, thanks ever so much for helping to share the word and, and helping me with my w mission, which is to, to spread helpful, useful, real information um, that helps with health and um, really self-understanding.